hey guys welcome back to my channel so this video is going to be a little different um i've been getting quite a few requests over the over time um wanting to know my testimony wanting to know where i came from what happened um during my single season so i met love my life you know my love story or whatever so i'm definitely going to get on here and tell y'all now if y'all been following me for a while, y'all have seen my previous vlogs. If you haven't, go down. I'll leave a link down below. Go check them out. Um, y'all know that I was in a three-year relationship prior to meeting him. And um, it was hard. It was hard getting over that relationship, mainly because I felt like I lost a best friend. Um, that was the main thing or a companion or a partner um, who was always there and got me through a lot in life. I was actually, if you check out my nursing school, you know, success after heartbreak and passing the NCLEX. If y'all go back down to those videos, y'all see my story where I told y'all before my ex broke up with me like three days a week after I passed my boards, almost like they were waiting for that to happen and then because we were already like ending anyway um also if you guys didn't know prior to dating him i never really i mean i've dated guys i've talked to guys or whatever but i've never had a real serious relationship with a man in my entire life i've always dated women my entire life yes believe it or not that's part of my testimony um and deep down i always knew that something just something something didn't sit right like I know I was raised in the church, you know, I was always God fearing, but now, I, you know, I'm very spiritual. I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. So I'm all about having a relationship with God and I've tasted God at a very, very young age. So I, I knew deep down, I wanted to have a man that loved me. I wanted to have a kid. I want to have kids. I want to have a family. I want to have a home. I want to raise a family you know deep deep down i always knew that in the back of my mind okay so taking it back i was in a three-year relationship um with the woman and apart from me having because god always talked to me in my dreams i'm a dreamer god will deal with me and wrestle with me in my dreams because he knows that's that's how i listen um and i was really happy in that relationship just because she was like supportive never gave me problems wasn't drama you know i've been through a lot me and my sister like we've been through a lot like we've been crazy we've, we've acted we, we've been through some crazy relationships so some of y'all watching y'all already know we was crazy back then i'm sorry but we've been through a lot so this relationship was more like peace it was peaceful but i think she came into my life for a reason like I think that got me through nursing school and got me to the next level. I needed peace and that person I think served their purpose. And right after I got my degree or after I got my nursing license, that season was done. Now, like I said, um, when that person left, we had a place together, everything left me with everything the bills the house everything okay my family everyone that i've known lives in orlando and that's where i'm from i was born in lakeland raised mostly in orlando and she was all i had her friends her family was all i had you know so i was already done with school so i no longer had that companionship and friendships of like school you know people stick together just to get through the program and you know relationships fall off and that's normal but when i tell y'all i went through i'm not saying one of the toughest times because i've been through some tough times y'all i've been through some tough times but that season this season felt different and I've never felt a loneliness, a deep depression, a deep sadness to the point where I feel like I didn't want to live. Like, because I felt a sense of rejection. I felt not good enough, which brought me back to my childhood traumas of, you know, things that happened to us when we were kids and, and, and that carries on to your adulthood. So, side note, 
see a therapist if y'all got childhood trauma because that does affect you in your relationships as an adult just saying um but it just brought back all of those feelings all of those emotions and i would say i got done with school in march mid-march relationship was over at the end of march I had to pick up the pieces, I had to pick up jobs, I had to do what I had to do because I was out here in Tampa by myself, like dealing with heartbreak, dealing with rejection, dealing with loneliness, dealing with depression. Like there were, I probably spent maybe two months straight, like crying myself to sleep, literally crying in the dark. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. I pretty much put myself off into a, a, a black hole where no one really could talk to me except my mom, my sister. Like I was just no, I was just no good for such a long time. And then I'm, I just bought it back to God and I'm like, God, listen, like you've seen everything I've been through. You know the desires of my heart. You know what I want. You know what I need. You know what I need more than what I think I need, you know? And I told him, I was like, ain't no way. Like, I know I wanted to be with a man, but I ain't no way. Like, I date guys, but I never take them seriously. They players, and I ain't got time for that. Like, my talk, because what I've been through with men, well, with a stepfather at the time, I was molested, uh, me and my sister, at a very, very young age. And um, my sister grew, you know, more rebel. Like, not promiscuous, but promiscuous, more rebelish. I grew more afraid. I was so afraid of men. You could touch me one way and I would just cringe because of the things I've been through as a child. And I never thought I'll get over that, ever. Ever thought I'll get over that. And um, that's why I say, God, ain't no way. Ain't no way I'm gonna be able to be with a guy. Like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to be with a man. There's no way. So that's how I know, like, oh, get emotional. It's the hormones, okay, I'm pregnant. So just bear with me. Cranberry juice, okay. That's how I knew it was God because I went through a dark, dark period. I didn't want to live. I felt like every relationship I've been in always turned into drama, disaster. I was a crazy person because I was requiring them. I wanted them to love me a certain way, so strong to feel a void in myself, only to realize that because I tasted God at a young age and I've experienced God's love, there's no way that I, any human, any man, any woman, any creature, any being can complete me. No one can do that for me. No one can love me the way God loves me. No one can do what only God can do. And I learned that the hard way by failed relationship, failed relationship, failed relationship, failed relationship. And it's just, I was tired of the cycle. So going back, I was, um, I was in a dark place for a couple of months. For, for a long time, for a very, very long time. I would lay in my bed, I wouldn't eat, I would watch YouTube videos. And Craig David was this guy, this relationship coach, relationship counselor, and I would watch sermons. So I was just always, but Craig had a lot of um, relationship content, like just how to better yourself, how to, what kind of attachment style you have. Like I had an anxious attachment style on my relationships. That's why they never worked because I never healed from the things I've been through. And it just traumatized all my partners in my relationship and everyone thought I was crazy. <laughs> I had a lot of feelings, okay? But I know what that was. I know what it is now, what it, what it was then. So I would literally just have sermons playing in the background all day, all night. I would force myself to go to church. I will force myself to eat. I will force myself to go to work. I will force, like, I had to take out, I had to go on a leave, mental leave, because I went through so much depression, so much anxiety. I literally had to, I forced myself to get out of this because I just thought about how God brought me through so much. He's never left me. He's never, every time something bad has happened to me, something always better is coming. Something always better happens. And God just opens doors and, and he's always seen me through. So that's why I knew, although I didn't feel it, although I, I didn't feel God sometimes, most of the time I felt alone, 
alone. Although I called my friends, eventually months after, they tired of hearing the same story. They tired of hearing me cry. They tired of hearing what I'm thinking about and how I'm feeling. I had to push, I had to push through it. So I literally like just played positive things into my spirit, into my mind, into my soul every second because I'm fighting demons in my head. Just like, you're alone, you're whatever, you're beautiful, but no, no one's gonna love you. No one's gonna treat you right. You're never gonna find a man. You're never gonna get over that. They're gonna do what you, what this man did to you as a child. They're not gonna, women are just gonna be it for you. There's nothing, nothing better for you. I'm fighting these demons in my head because that's how my mind is programmed at this point from cycle after cycle after cycle of doing the same things over and over. That's how I was programmed. So, Lord, give me the words to say. So I knew I had to fight that spirit with spirit. I knew I had to undo all of that. And God literally pulled me through that. He literally pulled me through that. I was angry. I was angry at God. I was angry at why did that happen to me? I was a child. I was innocent. Why was things taken away from me? I didn't have, I feel like I didn't have a fair chance. You know what I'm saying? And then dealing with all these relationships and it was just, it was just, it was just a terrible, terrible time. And anyway, I forced myself. So when I say all day and all night, all day and all night as I slept so when I wake up that pain just rushes because you know when you sleep I slept my life away I took melatonin I took pills so I can just sleep so I didn't have to feel the pain so I didn't have to feel the loneliness and then I literally would wake up in the middle of the night and the pain just comes rushing like oh like a heaviness like a heavy pain would just start rushing to me and then I have to look at the tv and there's a T. Jakes or Joyce Myers or Elevation Church or you know something that's just feeding me feeding me like I ha I wake up crying like that's how low I was like I would wake up and just ball like just ball and I don't even think it was mainly so much about my ex like the girl or the person because she's not God she's not she, she was a great person she taught me a lot and she served a purpose and I think she was supposed to be in my life for that season but I think it was bigger than that. I think I reached like a breaking point, you know, like enough, enough is enough. Like I'm tired of going through the same things. I'm tired, I wanna give up. I don't wanna live, I don't wanna go through this. I don't wanna try, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do nothing. But God was with me the whole time, y'all. God has never left me, he'll never leave me. He's never, he's never going to leave me. So I pushed and eventually, those things fighting my brain, my mind, those demons fighting against what I'm feeding myself over and over. Eventually, God's gonna step in and you're going to see that change. And I saw that change. Eventually, I started waking up and I'm not thinking about it as often any, anymore. I didn't feel as lonely. I got back in the gym, I gained all this weight. When I got done with nursing school, y'all, I lost all that weight, I lost like 40 pounds which I'll do a video later um, about how I lost 40 pounds. But what I did that was so crazy. So I believe in manifestation. I believe in what you meditate on, who you saw, um, who you believe, what you believe you deserve, what you believe is coming, meditating on it night and day, all of the time as if you're already there, as if you're already this person. That brings people into your life that brings that energy that's going to attract whatever you put out is what you're going to attract so because after the two months we're going through a very very low period the few months after that i just poured i just poured into myself when i say i was in the gym i had a trainer training me three times a week i was on keto like i was intermittent fasting i was having fun with my friends again I was having fun with my friends again. Like I started feeling happy. I, I I moved one bedroom to the other bedroom and the office to the other room just to change up the energy in the apartment, just to change up the place so it could feel like my own, not like a place that somebody left me in. You know, like I literally got my strength back through God by being on my face, by crying out, by being consistent. So I started going to the gym and then I started going to church 
and I started getting the word and I started listening to praise and worship. And every time anything tried to come against me, attack me, I literally would fight it with God. I literally would fight it with something positive. I had to watch what I saw. I had to watch where I went. I had to watch what I thought about because those are seeds that were getting planted into me that just made me go back into that dark space and I refused to go back. So now that I'm in this healthy place, God started showing me, you know, the man in my life, the man that's going to come. Like, it was so crazy when it happened because I felt like, I know it was God because it's like a month before I met him, I felt like I started, I had to prepare. Like I started preparing for things. Like I was like, oh no, I gotta get fine. I gotta get fine because he coming. He gonna be tall, he gonna be dark skin, brown skin, he gonna have a nice smile, he gonna have dark features, beautiful eyes, lashes, he, gonna, he, gonna he just gonna be a hard worker, he gonna have this growth, this beard, this, I literally, I don't know why I start. it's so weird, I just started envisioning me meeting him, places I would meet him at, and like, I thought myself like I'd meet him at a restaurant, and then I was at Barnes and Nobles reading a book coming from church and he in the aisle and I lock eyes with you and he lock eyes with me and and <laughs> like I don't know it was so weird like I was just starting to God was just placing things God was just telling me prepare 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 even my mom started saying things to me because my mom is very spiritual my mom is the interceder okay and intercessor she prayed for her children she got us through a lot um, my mom was like, Nisha, you say, she say, just keep doing what you're doing. Something's coming. Something's coming. You know, he's coming. Like, you know, keep working on yourself. Keep working on yourself. Keep working on being be the best version of yourself. I became the best version of myself. And because I was putting so much into me, that energy was drawing this person in. Y'all, now the final straw of what really bought him. Y'all know what this is? Okay. It's like a prayer book or a place where I journal. This literally, and I wrote some very sad things in here when I went through stuff, but this is what I wrote, values of my husband. This is a two page list of the man that I'm going to meet, what he'll possess, how he'll look, the man that God has for me. I made a list and I read it every day and I meditated on it. I was like, oh, like I was getting excited, almost like I knew it was coming, but I had no, it's like my faith and hope was just so strong. Like I knew it was coming. It was so crazy. I wrote things like he's loyal, he's strong, he's, you know, financially he's successful, he's handsome, beautiful eyes, beautiful smile. He's very protective. He has high family values. He's spiritual. God fearing, puts God before me, puts God before anybody. Very honest. And mind you, everything on this list is everything that he is, which blows my mind. Blows my mind. And um, I put hard working, very honest. He's my biggest fan. Um, he's faithful, he's not controlling. And then I start, these are more things that like, I want him to possess as far as character, loving, loyal. Um, and on the other side, I had, you know, things, hobbies that he may like that we have in common, how he'll look. I put like great kiss and great lips, honest, brown skin, chocolate brown skin, dark features, beautiful eyes, long eyelashes, beautiful hair, beautiful beard, beautiful grotee, like has integrity, has hard work and already established. When I tell y'all, if y'all don't make y'all list, okay? Make Y'all think I'm playing, okay? I wrote that list and I meditated on it and not even a week later, I met him. I upgraded my car, I was working hard. I got my first like Mercedes. Um, I went to Mercedes dealership. I was actually working at um, my insurance company, which was Liberty Mutual at the time. I don't know if y'all ever knew that, but yeah, it was Liberty Mutual Insurance. And you know, I had FMLA you know, for my, you know, depression and stuff. So, and I had it intermittently, so I can just take it, you know, as needed. And I feel like I needed it when I really wanted to go, just go wash my car because I was excited that I got my car and I got off work. Anyway, something told me to get off work. So I just got off work and I drove to Mercedes dealership to go wash my car because it was free. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, when I did that, I don't know what happened, okay? I was sitting in the lobby while I was washing my car. I was on my phone. I was like, you know, on my phone. And I 
I didn't even see him walk in. I didn't see nothing. Y'all, when I tell you I looked up, I looked up, and I don't do stuff like this, y'all. I took a picture of him on the side with my cell phone. I was like this. While he was in his phone. You think I'm playing? <laughs> Insert picture here. That is the first picture I saw. I took a picture of him and I sent it to my mama. And you know what I said to my mom? I said, mom, I said, I think this is my husband. I literally said that, you can ask her. I said, if God were to send me a man, he would look just like that. He would be that right there. And mom said, really? She was like, oh, he's handsome, blah, 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 blah. I just knew it. It was so crazy. Like, I don't be taking pictures of random people. I don't care if you're cute. Like, mm -mm. I took a picture of him. Mm -mm. I went to the bathroom, freshened up, you know, make sure I was cute and, you know, makeup, you know, ain't nothing, nothing in my teeth or whatever. And, uh, you know, I just <laughs> came back. We locked eyes. He said I look mean at first, cause but when I smile, you know I look nice. But I had a resting feet face, so we locked eyes, and then you can tell he kept like, you know, looking. I was like, oh yeah, come on God, come on God, come on God, come on God, do it God, do it God, do it. <laughs> and I was like, come on y'all, come talk to me. And then it started raining, like it was so weird, cause like I want to say something, but I ain't gonna say nothing, cause I'm a girl. You know, I'm not gonna do that. You gonna pursue me, okay? But I was thinking like, dang, how can I, is he gonna say something to you? And I'm like, what's going on? And you know, he kept looking up. And it's almost like God was like, oh my gosh, rain. <laughs> so we made it rain. And then, um, oh rain, um, he looked up and he was like, hmm, it's raining. And I'm like, yes, yes, it is raining. Oh my gosh, it's raining. Hi, how are you? <laughs> It was like, oh, you know, I'm nice. He's like, he was like, what is your name? And then that's when I heard the accent. I said, like, oh, he's from an island. He Jamaican. He's something. You know, he. He was like, he was like, my name is. I can't. Y'all don't laugh at me, but <laughs> I didn't understand how. Sometimes I didn't understand what he said. I'm country. I'm southern. You know, and he just this island man. That's just like. He was like, oh, so uh, what? Do, what do you do? And uh, what's your name? And. You know, this is my version of him. So, you know, what do you do? You know, what's your name? Um, oh, do, do you live around? Do you work around here? You can tell he was just trying to like find something to say. I was like, boring combo kicker upper, but okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm working right now. Actually, I left early. And he was like, yeah, I work too. I, I work down the street. And, um, you know, I just came to wash my car. He's like, I came to wash my car too. I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm on my lunch break. I got to go back to work and blah, blah, blah. So we just start talking. Like, then he started asking me questions, like, as if we were like on a first date. It was so crazy. It's like, none of the world, none of the world was around us. It was just me and him. I was like, oh, it's on. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, it's so funny. So we just talking or whatever, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. and um, it got so funny because he was done. The guy came up to him and said, "Hey, sir, your car is ready." He was like, "Oh, okay, okay," and he gave him the keys. And I'm like, "Oh, well, it was, you know, nice." He's like, "He was like, no, 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 I'm gonna stay." I say, "I said, March on your lunch break. <laughs> March on your lunch break." <laughs> He was like, yeah, yeah. I say, so you're gonna be late? He was like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. This man did not leave my presence, okay? He did not leave my presence until my car was done, which is like another 30, 45 minutes. Okay, he sat there and talked to me and would not leave until I was ready to leave. And then we walked out, he walked me to my car, we exchanged numbers, we planned, he already planned the date. I'm telling you, when a man wants you, Okay, they will pursue you. Okay, they will pursue you. He had a date planned. I met him on a Tuesday. He was my boyfriend by Saturday, and I done moved in. By, <laughs> like, it, it just happened so fast, and it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Like, I didn't move fast. I didn't. I. It was all him. He wanted me off that market, honey. I'm telling you, I've never met someone on a Tuesday 
and had him as a boyfriend or girlfriend on a Saturday. It just don't happen. I don't do that. Like, no, like, uh-uh. <laughs> so that's how he wasn't playing over me. Like, he snatched me up. Like, and we've been like inseparable ever since. And I knew it was God. <laughs> So yeah, um, I got a lot of stories, y'all. A lot of stories on um, us, our relationship, everything. Like just everything, just how everything happened. So I wanted to get on here and express and be vulnerable to you guys because I don't care. I care, but I don't care. It's my story, it's my testimony. If it's gonna help somebody else who's going through a lonely season, a lonely time, who feels like their Boaz or their person is not going to come, trust me. You do the work on yourself. You get your mind right. You get your spirit right. You focus. You pour into yourself. You make a list of the type of man you want. You believe that he's there. You cook. You clean your house. You do things as if you already have that man. As you already have the man of your dreams. As you already have the house and kids of your dreams. You act as if it is. And you're consistent. I'm telling you, you will attract him to you. And what's for you is for you. You ain't got to fight. He had to cut off like five females when he met me. Okay, he was a little bachelor around here. Okay, you know, I had to shut that down. You know, I had to shut that down. <laughs> so, like, he was not he was not playing. And a man and all these women wanted to lock him down. He's a hard working, he's a good man. You know what I'm saying? But, and they were beautiful girls. They didn't do it for him because that could because he wasn't for them and they weren't for him there were girls who broke his heart there were girls who did things to him that man that woman wasn't for him he was not okay so thank you for messing up for me okay and that's how god works y'all so i hope this encourages you if you guys like these type of videos make sure you guys just comment down below leave your testimony tell me what you guys want to see you know, let me know if this encourages you. I really did this just so you guys can see another side of me and just, cause it's been a while since I've done it. I know I've been vlogging and cooking, we've been playing around and being goofy, but I wanted to get on here to truly encourage you guys. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. It's Misha here again, I love y'all. And yeah, stay encouraged. See you later, bye.